September the 17th, 1631, and we're at the field of the Battle of Breton Field in the Thirty Years' War. Yeah, welcome back to my channel, this is Dom, and today I'm going to be playing a bit more Epic Pike and Shot, using the Warlords Pike and Shot rules, um, and a lot of the um, Epic Plastic figures mixed in with a good few metals as well from various manufacturers um, I thought I'd um, play the game exactly as it is in the book so this is the Battle of, uh, Battle of Breton uh, Field as I say it was a, a, fa a fairly um, large battle between the Swedes and the Imperial forces um, you can see here this is the imperial side of the table looks to be a lot more uh, figures a lot more men as opposed to the Swedish on this side so we'll have a quick look at the the table particularly it's a pretty bland table now they suggest in the warlord uh, rule book that you should play this on an 8x6 so that's exactly what I'm doing um, the only features of any note are coming around here there's a hill here where this where the imperial forces deploy and another bigger hill over there where the Swedes deploy um, all the other bits of uh, hedges and um, well not hedges fields and buildings and trees play absolutely no part I've just put them there to make it look pretty if I'm honest um, the objective of the game um, yeah, it says here the objective is a victorious general p will possess both the hills, so this one and that one, uh, and have a fighting unit within six inches of both flank table edges by the end of the game. So over there and over there. Any other result is a draw, irrespective of casualties. That's quite interesting. So, because there's virtually no terrain, uh, there's not really any need for any terrain rules, but however, the hills on each side are deemed to be steep. So they say that they offer advantage to uh, troop fighting, uh, fighting above. So if you if you're have a unit fighting downhill, you add one to their combat rolls. Uh, units defending add one to their combat resolution. So that's uh, a double whammy for that. So we'll, we'll run through the forces as they are. So out here, this is the um, Imperial Catholic League Army's right flank under, uh, who was this, Von Schoenberg. Um, no, that's wrong, tell me a lie. The uh, right wing is under... Um, Egon the Egon the Seventh, Count Wurstenberg. Um, so he has a command rating of eight, but but it says to change his command rating to seven after the fast casualties are caused on the battalion. So that's an interesting one. So he's obviously keen up until the point when the bullets fall, bullets fly. So in the front rank there, you've got a unit in the middle of cuirassiers. And then two units of Harkerburst, um, sort of medium cavalry, I guess. And then backed up by a unit of Imperial Pike and Shot. The right centre is controlled, is a German mercenary command under General von Schoenberg. And that has three uh, regiments or three battalions of Pike and Shot. And then the centre was, uh, I guess they, they call this the main body. Uh, this is uh, Von Tilly himself, the commander in chief. Now he, in this game, Von Tilly commands this large battalion as well as being CNC. So that will probably limit his command abilities. Um, oh, I should have said Von Schutzenberg is an eight. Uh, Tilly is a nine, so he's pretty useful. Um, now he's got a very, very powerful looking uh, command. At the back here you've got two double um, 
battalia of uh, pike and shot. Uh, they're basically classed as large, so I've doubled them up. They've got two units of commanded shot in front. They've got uh, two medium batteries and two heavy batteries. So some serious firepower on, on this Tilly uh, Britalia. And then out on the left flank for the uh, Imperialists, you've got uh, Count Pappenheim. Uh, who is a command rating 8 and he's got another unit of pike and shot um, and then he's got four regiments of cuirassiers the imperial army's finest lined up so that's the uh, imperial side heading over to the other side of the table for the swedes um, so um, the overall key overall commander is uh, king uh, augustus Adolphus, of course, who is a command rating 10. The right wing is commanded uh, by General Jean uh, Banner, who is a command rating of 8. He, command, he commands a combined Swedish and Finnish uh, cavalry regiments. You've got in front, you've got three units of Swedish pike, um, sorry, commanded shot. Um, back here, you've got the Finnish light cavalry. And then two units of Swedish light cavalry there. So although it's quite small in number, it's quite powerful. Into the uh, sort of right centre, I guess you call this, or the, they call it the main line. Um, this is um, General Maximilian Tufel, um, command rating of eight, um, which is a Swedish and German veteran uh, battalion. So you've got two regiments of Swedish infantry, pike and shot. You've got a medium ordnance battery. Uh, some commanded shot, Swedish commanded shot. And then two, bat two batteries of light ordnance. Um, at the back here, slightly further back, we've got the uh, Saxon allies. Uh, it describes these as freshly raised Saxon regiments. Uh, they are commanded by John George I, Elector of Saxony, who has a command rating of 8. You've got two Saxon pike and uh, musket units and two Harkibus cavalry units. I say he's a command rating of 8. And then out here on the left flank, uh, we have uh, a a combined Swedish and Scottish uh, regiment. Um, so this is controlled by Count Gustav Horn, who's a command rating of eight. Uh, he has two Swedish light cavalry units in the front there, um, a pike and shot, which I'm using uh, the Scots for. These are uh, some of the new Covenanter Scots um, from Warlords. And then two batteries of ordnance and two units of uh, Swedish uh, commanded muskets. So that's the side. So it's probably quantity over quality, I would think. Mind you, the Saxons aren't much cop either. So the objective, as you can say, is to uh, take the two hills and get a unit. Uh, on each flank within six inches of the table edge by the t end of the game. So um, I guess no further ado, we'll get going. Right, so ready to get cracking with this. Um, uh, unhelpfully, the um, the scenario in the book doesn't actually give a, a game length. 
um, or tell you who starts first. So um, starting first is easy, we'll just roll off for that as per the standard rules. Um, in terms of turns, I see I play to eight and see how that goes um, or until I run out of time or the will to live. So um, priority wise, I'm going to use the green dice for the um, Swedes and the red dice for the Imperials. So highest goes first. So six plays two, so it looks like it's Swedish turn first. Uh, right, I'll be back after I've done their first moves. Oh, incidentally, there because there's a number of named generals, and there are named generals in the rules, um, I'm just going to use the two CNCs as the uh, named generals. So that's going to be Tilly on the... Uh, um, uh, on the Imperial side and um, Gustav himself on the Swedish side. Now let me just find the rules. So Count von Tilly um, on the Imperial side, he's a command rating 9. He has a special rule of Father Tilly. Tilly was renowned for his care and the um, the carry undertook looking after his soldiers, and he repay and they repaid that with the, with their loyalty. Any unit within twelve inches of Tilly may re-roll any break test they're required to make. That's pretty powerful. And then Gustav himself, um, he is a command rating ten. He has a special rule of Lion of the North. King Gustavus was the master of the aggressive manoeuvre and was usually leading from the front. When Gustavus joins a unit and issues a follow me order, the order applies to the all the units in the battalion, not just the unit he's joined. In addition, any unit that Gustavus joins receives a plus one combat resolution bonus. So that's pretty pokey, pretty pokey. Okay. Um, so, as I say, we'll start with the Swedish turn one. Okay, so quite a quiet turn for the Swedish side. Um, playing a little bit canny across most of the table. Uh, out here on the right, we just pushed forward the commanded shot and the cavalry. Uh, the commanded shot went two moves and the cavalry went one. Um, just trying to slow down that mass of Imperial cavalry over there. In the center, the main bulk of the forces stayed exactly where they were. Uh, they pushed both the light batteries further forward because they weren't in range, they are now, um, and the commanded shot moved forward as much as anything to get away from the, the cannons that are behind. Uh, across the center, nothing much, as I say, happened. The Saxon um, force and Saxony forces um, came forward to uh, fill the line there so they got two moves off moved up exactly as you see and over here on the left decided not to do anything uh, with these troops here even though their cannons aren't in range I'm assuming that the Imperial forces uh, will move forward um, because they've they've got the numbers really so the only shooting there'll be cannons that moved can't um, so I think it's just these medium ordnance here in the middle um, who will fire what's the range they've got a 36 in range so they're in range but at long range so I think they might fire at that battery there in front of them um, that's probably the one it's only going to be one dice so Swedish medium ordnance at long range is one dice hitting on a four um, long range is a five and um, uh, a skirmish target is a six yeah six to hit and it rolls a two so that's a miss and I think that's it everything else is out of range the muskets have an 18 inch range um, so even these fellas here not quite no so that's the end of Swedish turn one um, we'll be back with Imperial turn one as well all right so turn one for the Imperials um, was a mixed bag so out here on the left um, 
left wing, the Crassiers move forward two moves. So 18 inches uh, right up in, into the face of those commanded shot. Um, the infantry uh, that's with the left flank cavalry just moved up to sort of maintain a rallying point, I guess, and protect the flank of Tilly's brigade. Tilly decided not to move forward because he's got uh, two heavy batteries and two uh, medium batteries. I think my feeling is that he needs to try and do a bit of softening up before they get into combat. Um, so that's what they've decided to do. And that thought was reinforced by the fact this command on the right um, failed to move. Um, and it's out because Tilly is the brigade commander and also the CNC. It's not very easy to get re-rolls, so that's a bit of a shocker. Out here on the right, um, the entire battalion moved forward two moves. Um, no, just one move, I lied, um, which was basically all they got. So we'll see what happens. So effectively, we've got the two wings are moving forward, the centre's sitting back. So shooting-wise, we'll start over here with Tilly's command. Um, he's got um, a heavy ordnance piece and a couple of medium. Well, he's got two heavies and two mediums. So range for heavy ordnance is 48 inches. So that's this one here. I think they're going to concentrate on these guys on the hill. So doesn't really matter where we go. Uh, yeah, it's long range, whatever they do. So they're going to fire on that um, that unit there. Uh, that is 35, uh, 33 inches. So it's just one shot. Um, they are going to be hitting on a five. And they hit. That is a hit. First shot in anger against those boys at the back there. Um, they need a saving roll of, well, it's going to be six because they're being hit by uh, cannon, probably. Standard saving roll for pike and shot are four pluses. Um, and I think it's minus two. Yeah, so hit by medium or heavy, or, or hit by heavy audience is minus three, so it's a six to save. It rolled a six. <laughs> Crikey. Um, so that is fine. However, they are disordered, aren't they, I think? Yeah, just checked it out. So uh, six is a disorder. So I've uh, just been playing Hell Caesar, so I forget which is which. So um, that uh, successfully saved, but it is disordered. Uh, the median ordinance in front, this one here, it's got a 36 inch range. Does it fire at the infantry? It can ignore the ordinance because they're a difficult target. Um, and it can ignore the commanded shot if it wishes to. So I've just not put in pipe lock over. Uh, it can ignore the uh, uh, commanded shot as well for the same reason. So I think it's going to fire at that one there. So it's one, again, one shot hitting on a five. Blimey, they've got it in for them. That's a six. Uh, so saving roll for that battalion is a six as well. Uh, it's rolled a one, so that's a miss. So that takes a casualty and is disordered. Moving across. None of these are in range. Maybe should have moved them up, but never mind, I didn't. Over here, the other ordnance. We've got um, medium battery here. I think it's going to fire at that one there. 36, it's 32 inches or so, so that's in range, going to be a 5 to hit. Crikey, the uh, Tilly's artillery have got it in, got their eye in, so that's another disordering hit on that green regiment. Uh, it'll be saving on a 6. It does save though. Um, they're trying their best, the Swedes. So that's a disorder and a wound. And then the heavy battery that's here. Oops, heavy battery, it's here. Um, 
I think they're going to try and support their cavalry. So they're going to, even though it's going to be a negative, they're going to fire at those boys because um, it's half range. That means they'll get two dice. Um, they will be firing at a basic of four. It's under half range, so it's still four, but they're a skirmish or a, a loose order target. So that is a five to hit. Double two, so missed. Um, other than that, that's probably getting there. Um, oh yeah, the uh, the Carassiers here can both fire. Uh, they've got pistols. Um, so they'll fire at those. Pistols have a six inch range, so they're well, well within range. So this one here will be firing at the commanded shot. It's a four to hit, down to a five because they're a commanded shot. Misses, and the other one on the same one, also a five, and hits with that. So saving roll for the uh, commanded shot is a, f uh, for Swedish it's four, which they do not pass, so that's a wound. So I'll mark that up and we'll be back with Swedish movement. Right, turn two for the Swedes. Um, so out here on the right, because of the crashes coming forward in the si same old uh, style, um, uh, I I, I got it wrong earlier on. I've, I said the commanded shot counter skirmish. They they aren't. Um, so I was thinking they'd be able to evade from those cavalry, but uh, they can't. So they're just going to get ridden down if those cuirassiers charge them. So instead, what they've done is pull back um, just so that they're beyond um, nine inches of those cuirassiers which has a double effect. It means the crashes can't fire at them, but also means they go a little bit further if they did choose to charge. And the, you can see the Swedish and Finnish cavalry have sort of fanned out to get fire on the uh, on the crashes as much as possible. We're going to hope for some disorders. You'll notice the little black tokens I put beside various units. That's to indicate that they've got first fire. Um, over here in the middle, uh, didn't really do anything um, to be honest because I wasn't entirely sure until I see where the uh, how the imperialists are going to come forward I decided it wasn't worth doing much so they'll stay exactly where they are you've got the two Saxon battalia who are disordered one with a casualty and one with that um, the Scots stayed in place um, what happened over here was maybe sillily I pushed the um, uh, commanded shot down the hill just to sort of uh, be able to get some shots on those cavalry as they come down um, and uh, the Saxon um, Haukabers came uh, across to support uh, their Swedish brethren here on the on the flank so we'll start with some shooting over here um, so the Swedish uh, commanded shot here on the left are going to fire at um, probably at the Karassias in the middle I think um, now the Swedish commander shot have four dice as standard uh, they also get a first fire so we'll remove that it gives them five dice um, they are firing at uh, they don't get a long range so it's just 18 inches yeah 18 inches um, so they're well within range so they've got a straight up four to hit well that was a lousy roll <laughs> All that to preamble and they get one hit that's all they get Carassias save on a four um, no nope, Carassias save on a three which they get so they are not uh, they don't suffer anything there the next unit along will fire at those uh, cavalry they're just regular heavy cavalry uh, so again they get five shots with their first fire hitting on fours Crikey, the Swedes have not got the guns in today. It's so just the two hits. Now those boys, I think, yeah, saving on four pluses. Well, they take two losses. I'll just leave the dice there for the moment and come back to put the tokens on in a bit. Right, so that's interesting. So because this commander, uh, who I haven't actually put out, <laughs> is uh, a bit of a cowardly custard, he now, his command radius, his command... Uh, ability goes down to seven from eight so I have to try and remember that moving across uh, we've got the two light batteries uh, the first one 
So I want to fire at that. It's a 24 inch range, so it's only one dice. It's long range hitting on a five, which it does. Those cavalry suffer a minus, uh, minus one, I think, for being hit by light ordnance. No, it's minus two for being hit by light ordnance, so they go to a six for a save, which they don't get. So they're up to three casualties already. And the gun beside, uh, I think it's going to fire at the, at the Carassias instead. Still a five to hit. It hits them as well. Uh, they were a three, they go down to a five, which they pass. So the Carassias aren't bothered, but the boys next to them feeling a little bit worse for wear. In fact, they're shaken. Three casualties is a shake. If those musketeers had actually done anything, it would have been um, pretty nasty all across there. So they got away with it relatively lightly, the Imperial horse. They're going to need some infantry support, I think, looking at that. So we fired her right across here. I don't think anything else is going to be in range. Uh, 18 inches. No, definitely not. The light guns that were wheeled forward here slightly, um, they're going to fire. They're going to fire at that medium battery right in front of them. Just at long range, so it's going to be sixes to hit. Oof, a five, unlucky. Um, the musketeers beside them, I don't think they're in range. No, they're not. So the medium guns here, I think they'll fire at these uh, commanded shot here. Uh, they're not skirmish targets, I've just found out. Uh, so it's going to be a five to hit. No, it's a four. Um, so that is here. The other light gun over here, they'll fire at the commanded shot there, just at range. So that's one dice hitting on a five. They missed, and then over here we've got a whoop, over here we've got a fair bit of shooting. So this could go badly for the uh, Imperials. Mind you, the way the shooting went last turn, uh, or last time with a commander shot, I'm not sure. So these boys out here, they'll fire. As we know, they get four dice as standard. They get their first fire dice as well. So that's five dice. Hitting on a four. Again, not brilliant. No, no disorders, which is really what they wanted. Well, it's okay. They got three hits, uh, but this was disorder they were looking for. Uh, Carassias are saving on threes. Oh, two losses. So two casualties on that end one there. Next over is the guys who took a shock last, or took a hit last turn. Uh, they get also their five dice. Probably firing at the same target, I should imagine. Um, two hits. Another one on the uh, on the Carassias. That front unit has taken three losses. Crashes do have a stamina of four, so they're actually okay for the moment. Uh, moving across, I don't think any of these guys are in range. Any, no, the pistols are not. These boys on the end. This commanded shot will fire at the other unit, Carassias. Again, five dice with their first fire. Hitting on fours. Oh, there's a disorder. Oops, uh, it was two hits, uh, three hits, and a disorder. Um, so I'll put the disorder on. Oh. Three saves of three, just one dead. And then the um, uh, Swedish cavalry out there will fire one dice of pistol, um, which will be a four. And they hit as well, saving on three. No, another one. So they took some hits there, the old uh, uh, Carassias, that's for sure. But they're still intact for the moment. 
And so I think that's the end of this turn. We'll be back with the Imperial turn two. So I'm going to do this one live because I think it's kind of important, really. So um, these caresses are disordered, so they can't move this turn other than to move backwards. So I'm going to start with this regiment here, and it's going to attempt to charge these Swedish light cavalry here. Um, they're going to need two moves to do it. Um, uh, so I just wanted to check whether or not um, they could do an initiative, but actually initiative on in the, this scale is only six inches, so they'll be on that anyway. So they're going to need two moves to charge. Uh, they roll a seven. He is a command rating of eight, I think. Just double check that. Yeah, it's command rating of eight. So therefore they only get the one move. So they'll move nine inches that way, which gets them right up close, but no cigar. Um, so those can't move anywhere. So we've got the other Carassias that are damaged. Um, I think they're going to try and charge... They're going to try and charge those commanders shot over there. I think that's their best bet. Trouble is, if they don't charge the... Oh, this is very tricky because I know that if they try and charge this uh, Swedish, they will be... Uh, they'll evade, probably. No, I don't know if they can because they're not in skirmish yet. So no, they can't just yet. Um... Do you know what? They're going to go. They're going to go for it. They're going to go for the uh, finish cavalry there, with the support of their brethren there. So, ooh, three. So that's well and truly far enough to go. Now, Swedish cavalry, uh, Finnish cavalry. They are light horse, but they're not skirmishers. Interestingly, so they will. Uh, so basically what happens is they'll go half the distance and the Swedish will, uh, the Finnish will counter charge. And these boys will come in behind to back them up. Right, interesting. Very interesting. Um, so these fellas can't move. So I'll do the rest of the moves and I'll be back if there's anything interesting. Okay, so other orders over here on the left wing. I was going to bring the uh, pike and shot up to basically support the flank of those cavalry, but it failed. So, and it's outside command radius, so that was that. Um, <coughs> in the center, well, um, basically, this has been a general move forward by the Imperial infantry. So, the command shot moved forward to try and screen the uh, big pipe blocks that have swung two moves. To their sort of right arc they should be okay to fire their cannons over the top of them um, in the right of center this battalion of three got two moves off also and started to head off down the valley um, towards the enemy on the hill um, uh, over here we've got to decide what to do with these fellows over here so we've got one shaken unit um, so this Commander, not that I've got one, I need to find, go and find a commander. He's a seven uh, now because the the scenario order says that uh, when the when his battalion takes one casualty, um, they become uh, he he goes down to a command radius of seven, command rating of seven. Sorry. So there's a lot of artillery up there, but at least now the infantry should be taking a bit of attention away from these cavalry. It's probably what I should have done to begin with. So. Do we try and charge? Um, 9, 18, that's two moves. Yeah, I think we try and do that. So, um, the... It'd have to be two separate charges. So the um, Carassias are going to attempt to charge those commanded shots. It's going to take two moves. There is a seven. That's all he gets, one move. That's the problem. Now his command's gone down. It's going to be quite hard to control. Um, the other cavalry will try and do the same to those commanded shots. They roll a 7-2. It's 
So they move forward. And the infantry behind, I think we'll just move them forward as far as they can go. They rolled a five, which is two orders. So they get forward a fair way. And the commander will try and rally off a casualty off this. And he does. That was a pretty successful turn So for this guy. So they are no longer shaken. Um, but um, and I need to find a commander for him so we'll go come back with some shooting so we'll do some shooting I don't think anything here is in range six inches no for the must for the pike uh, sorry for the um, pistols on the cavalry these boys here they can get a shot off I think Yep, they can. They're at extreme range, uh, but they can fire. So they'll fire in the commanded shot. They only get three shots, uh, and they don't get first fire like the uh, Swedish do. Um, so they will be hitting on fours. <laughs> One six and a miss. So the uh, commanded shot saving on a four. They do not. So it's a casualty and they are disordered. In fact, I've got a casualty marker, I just need the disorder, so I'll leave the six there to remind myself. Um, I think that's it across here, because these boys are a bit further back. Yeah, they can't fire. Moving over then, uh, the heavy ordnance on the hill. I think they're going to try and keep uh, wearing down the Saxons up there on the hill. It's long range, one dice. Uh, that Now they're firing overhead, so it's a six to hit. They roll a five. The medium ordnance beside. Uh, firing at the, those boys there, so that's gonna be again a six to hit. They roll a two, so that's a failure. Uh, into the center. We've got two units of commanded shot, so it's going to be six dice, firing at the Swedish commanded shot, uh, will be forced to hit. Crikey, my dicing's gone downhill, it's just the one hit. One hit for the Swedes to save, which they don't save, so that's a casualty on them. Ooh. But no disorder or anything, so that's important. All right, moving across, uh, we've got the medium battery here, which I think is going to try and fire at, uh, yeah, fire at them. So that is it's just outside of uh, half range. So it's only one dice hitting on a four, actually three, uh, hitting on five because it's long range. Uh, so that's a miss, and the heavy ordnance beside will probably fire on the same boys. Uh, that is half range for them. Um, so that's two dice hitting on a four. Two fours. They're going to be saving on a six. And they don't save either. So that's two casualties on those fellas there. So I think that's it for firing. Uh, it's a bit of fisticuffs, as they say. So no, no disorders, which is surprising. Um, so right, let's do the combat. Right, so we got the Finnish uh, cavalry char being charged by a unit of cuirassiers. Um, so this could be a bit of a hard time for the Swedes I or the Finns, I should imagine. So the cuirassiers charge and get eight dice. Eight. Um, they are hitting on a uh, would be four goes to three because they charged. Um, so that is six hits. Yep, six hits. My math is right. The fins are. I'll just leave those behind so we know that. Then the uh, finish have seven dice however they do have ferocious charge 
which means they can re-roll any misses, I think. Two, four, six, seven. Let me just double check that. Yeah, any misses. So they get seven dice hitting on a uh, three as well because they countercharged. They only got one miss, which they then missed anyway. So they hit with uh, six dice as well. So it's a brutal fight here. Um, the um, Finns suffered six losses and their saving roll is four plus. Uh, so they saved two, which means they lost four. Four dead. The uh, Carassias have got rather better saving roll of three plus. However, <laughs> Oh my goodness, they suffered four as well. Look at that. Uh, so four casualties apiece. However, that's where the good news stops. Uh, the uh, For the Finns, anyway. So the uh, um, Karassi is classed as heavy cavalry. Yeah, so they get an extra D3 in the result. So... That's another three to the win. So it's a draw. They win because they're heavy cavalry. They're supported anyway, so they've definitely won. Uh, also, both sides are shaken. Um, and the Finns are... Put it on the right one, Dom. The Finns are uh, one over their break test. So... Um, it's They're going to be testing at... Minus one because they have an excess casualty. And that's it. So, uh, rolling. Oh, they rolled an 11. So they get a 10, which for cavalry in hand to hand uh, retires one full move without changing direction and becomes disordered. So they go 12 inches backwards. And become disordered and shaken back here. With three casualties on them. Because they lose the excess. There we go. So they've pulled back to there. They're shaken and disordered with three casualties because that's their um, that's a stamina level. The um, Oops. The uh, all these boys were already at four, already at three, so they've got an additional four casualties. Now, what happens to the excess? I think because they're not fighting, they that just is lost. So they stay at four casualties, and um, they're sh they're shaken as they are. They can't pursue because they're shaken. Um, and that is it. So that's the upshot of turn two for the Imperials. So we'll start turn three for the Swedes. So starting, uh, I'll, start, so I'll start on the right here. Um, so I think what we're going to do is the um, Swedish cavalry are going to charge as an initiative charge into those Karassias. Crashes, um, because they're Kerakos, they have to stand to receive a charge. The theory they had um, was that they would use their pistols to disrupt the enemy charge. Um, not sure that necessarily works all the time, but there you go. Um, and this unit here is going to charge the disordered unit there. Rolls a three, so I should have done that on screen, but there you go, rolls a three, so charges. Now they are disordered, so they can't counter charge. Well, they're, they're Kurikos anyway, so they couldn't anyway. So uh, that's a charge there to nothing. Um, the, what should we do with the, these guys are supporting there, so they don't need to go anywhere. Those guys are just going to fire. Um, so, again, I haven't got a commander out for this this side either. Um, that's a bit silly. Uh, well, he's the, the invisible commander is going to try and roll off a casualty on the um, 
on the fins. He rolls an eight, he is an eight. So while they're disordered, they're no longer shaken. So that is that. Uh, we might as well do the uh, defensive fire for the Kurikos as they come in. So these uh, these crashers get one dice, uh, that's all they have, pistols, uh, but closing fire means they hit on a three. They hit, the uh, Swedes suffer a casualty, or what's their rally, it's a five plus. So they don't, so they take a casualty as they come in, but they crash in. Over here, the other, uh, no, the, uh, this one, isn't it, sorry. Uh, these fellas are disordered, um, so they hit on a four. They miss. So that's all the defensive fire. We'll move on uh, with uh, other f other moves. Okay, so Swedish turn three. Um, more happened out here on the left flank. Um, well, of course it's Swedish turn three, because I just did the other side, didn't I? So the other flank is what I mean. Um, the two Swedish um, light cavalry regiments uh, did a charge and were met by a counter charge by the Imperial Heavy Horse there. Um, the um, I just moved the these must this commander shot slightly over a bit, but that was as far as it went. Um, the Saxon cavalry have come round, they only got one move, so they're now sort of poised to support this wing. Didn't move any of the any other infantry in the middle mainly because the Imperials are coming um, and I want to give a chance for our uh, superior firepower to try and take effect and also see what happens on the wings because if the cavalry win the wings then that will change the whole complexion of the thing so um, we'll do some shooting and then we'll do the melees so uh, both lots of commanded shots will fire at uh, the cuirassiers there uh, the ones down here, I'm going to have to say they're firing an obscure shot um, because uh, there's a, they've got a whole melee going on to their front. So they get four dice. They would be hitting on a four, but it goes to a five. Well, that's a disordering hit. So that's a disorder on them for sure. Only the one hit though, wasn't it? So a three to save. They saved. And the next boys along, these are not obscured, um, so they would be hitting on fives because they are disordered. And they get absolutely nothing. The shooting's been dire, absolutely dire. We'll take that disorder off because they're not going to do anything else this turn. Um, the small battery here, I guess we'll have to fire at the Carassias. It's just over half range still, so it's only one dice. Uh, it's a firing overhead and it's long range, so it's a six to hit. <laughs> Jolly Wells hits. Uh, being hit by light ordnance is minus two on the saving roll, so it becomes a five, which they do not pass, so they suffer one casualty. And they're disordered as we saw. Uh, moving across the light battery here in the middle, I think it's going to fire at the same thing. This time it's not firing overhead, but it is firing long range, so it's a five to hit. No, forget that. Uh, nothing here in range. Across the middle. So we'll start with the... Um, I think we're going to duff up the uh, Imperial commanded shot because if we can do that then they might be able to get some shots onto those big blocks of infantry which is really desirable uh, light cannon so neat still still long range for that so one shot hitting on a five nope uh, the medium battery here one shot hitting on a five nope <laughs> um, the other battery Here, I will fire at these fellas. Are they in close range? Not quite, not quite. So still one dice, hitting on a five. Nope. <laughs> and the commanded shot there will fire at the same uh, regiment, 
because it's a first fire we get five shots hitting on a four wow that is awful rolling good grief so much for swedish firepower eh okay so so much for the master plan of trying to blow the uh, imperials away <laughs> with firepower uh, not going so good uh, let's start uh, well I think this one's going to fire at that uh, um, shaken Carassia block there um, aren't we within six inches yes we are so threes to hit crikey only two and it is disordered so two shots saving on a three Another casualty, so that's going to be a break test for them. Uh, the next one's there. I'm going to say they can fight the ones behind uh, because they've got a good shot on them. Uh, it's going to be sixes, uh, going to be uh, fours to hit. It's two hits with them. Saving of a three. That's one casualty on the boys at the back. So we're starting to put some casualties on them, if nothing else. And then the other uh, commanded shot here, we'll fight the front guys. So we've got four dice there. We'll be hitting on a four. Wow, that's better. Three hits, uh, four hits, count them. Uh, saving on a three. Only one extra casualty. So they are shaken, disordered and two over casualties. Um, we'll do a brake test for them. Uh, it's the end of the turn, isn't it? The brake test, so we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, I think that's all the shooting to be done by the Swedes. It's pretty terrible shooting, if I'm honest. Um, so we're just in the melees, I guess. So let's start with the cavalry out here on the wing. So these are intriguing because, in both cases, the Swedes have launched charges. against the uh, Carassias that have to receive the charge at the halt. So it gives a slight advantage to the Swedes. Okay, uh, this combat here, they, the um, Imperials get their eight dice, so they get an extra dice over the Swedes, two, four, six, eight. They would be hitting on a four, but they're disordered, so it goes to a five. three hits. Uh, the Swedes get seven dice, two, four, six, seven. Uh, they will be hitting on a three because they charged. They hit with quite a lot, so they hit with six hits. So, save and roll for the Swedes. They are light cavalry, so they're five. They don't save any, so they take three casualties, which means they're shaken. Straight out. And the Carassias took six. Wow. Uh, they took two casualties out of that. So they are now also shaken. Two casualties pushes them to shake as well. So, uh, upshot that was, um, actually the Imperial forces win because they did three losses on the uh, Swedes. Um, so, it's a break test for the Swedes at no excess, they're not disordered, so it's a straight up break test. They rolled an 11, so they're keen. But that does mean they, they retire uh, a full move and go shake, uh, go disordered. Find in the dice, there we go, 12 inches. So they go back to here. So shaken, disordered, and they've got three casualties. Uh, the um, 
Karachis here do not follow up because they are shaken and disordered for that matter. So that is that. Next combat is this one here. This is a bit closer, I would imagine, for the Imperials because they, uh, uh, although they couldn't counter charge, um, they aren't disordered. So the Swedes are charging in, they get seven dice hitting on threes. Uh, they just missed with one, so that's six hits. The um, Karasias get their eight dice hitting on fours. Uh, just knock that one over, they got five hits. So five plays six, advantage I would say to the Imperials. Uh, Crassius are saving on a three. They only take one loss this time, that's all. And the uh, Swedes have five saves of five. They, they suffer three losses. So, three plays one, they obviously lost the melee. They are supported by the commanded shot. Uh, but that only brings it up to um, uh, um, only brings them down to losing by one instead of two. They are also shaken because they've taken um, three casualties and they're in excess. So they're on three casualties plus one excess. So they're doing a break test. This time they roll a three. And that means they are toast. So the first regiment in either side to die is some Swedish cavalry. Who'd have thunk it? So they're destroyed. Uh, now because the Karasias didn't um, charge, they can't pursue even though they've won the melee so they stay exactly where they are and those commander shot right in front of them are feeling a little nervous right now i should imagine so that's the melees over here right so over here we've got um well this is a more even match whoops pick up some dice would help uh we've got um uh, Hargabus is on the Imperial side that have a hit of s have seven dice and the uh, and the Swedes have seven dice as well so we're gonna do they're both hitting on threes because they're both charged um, I'm gonna do red dice are the Imperials and green are the Swedes. You need threes to hit. So greens were missing. All the ones and twos. Oh, that's not good for the Swedes by the look of it. So Imperials have got their gander up. They hit with all seven. No, six. And four from the Swedes. Okay. Um, the Swedish saving roll is a five plus. We suffered. Oh, they yeah, they did all right. That was better than the odds. So they suffered three losses. However, they're probably going to lose this melee. And the Imperial troops. Now this time they're not as good as the Crassius, so they're saving on a four. They lose lose two. So two plays three. Uh, the Swedish cavalry are shaken because they're on three casualties, and that's their break test. That's their um, uh, stamina. Uh, they lost the melee by one, but they are supported. Um, so that evens out, so it stays a draw. Now, because neither side started the melee um, shaken, there's no need to do any break tests. So that just continues next round with no result 20, but it'll be a big, big advantage to the uh, Imperials because they are fighting a shaken foe so I think that is the end of this turn it's looking quite 
quite good. Not sure which. Uh, I thought the Swedes were winning out on that on the flank, but that last combat, um, destroying and shaking a cavalry regiment, um, has evened it up considerably. Even though there's two Swe uh, two um, Imperial Carassia uh, regiments shaken um, out here. Yeah, I'm surprised the Swedes didn't do better there, but. Uh, they could have done with a bit of help from their commanded shot. They really haven't done much to soften up those cavalry as they came in. Luckily, uh, the Saxon cavalry are coming to the support. So, um, I'm going to do the uh, Imperial turn three and we'll be back. Right, so exciting times on the um, Imperial side this turn. Really, uh, <laughs> very busy. So let's start here on the left. Um, so the unit of Carassias that have been sitting here, no, there, and was uh, shaken and disordered. I forgot to, forgot to its brake test on camera. Uh, so I just did that. It rolled a six, but it was in two in excess and it was disordered. So that gave it a net result of three, which was a rout. So that has left the table. Um, it did mean that what could happen, uh, what else happened? Ooh what didn't happen. So the uh, Carassias that were over here uh, did an initiative charge into the commanded shot. They've got two casualties but they should be able to ride them down fairly easily. Um, the um, other unit of Carassias that was here charged the shaken um, Swedish cavalry. They... Um, the disorder needs to come off, I just realised. Um, they needed two moves and they got it. In fact, I think they got three moves there to do that. Uh, the infantry support that was back here somewhere has moved up. Got, uh, I think there was two moves up as far as it can. So it's putting some pressure on those commanded shot. Uh, however, that's where the good news finished for this flank because the commander um, tried to move to rally off there but rolled an 11. Um, so that was them finished. So, um, what else happened on this flank? Over here, you can see not an awful lot changed because the artillery stayed exactly where it is. In the centre, Tilly's command tried to move as fast as it could to the right. Only got one move. Um, and the commanded shot, I wanted to move them up slightly further so that they could uh, just get out of the way, really. Uh, but they failed as well. Um, uh, so it is what it is over here the, it's all changed over here now this has been a uh, sorry let's set the camera up so over, all changed on the right hand side so starting with this command here got th it did a battalion order got three moves and almost climbed the hill um, so it's uh, right on the base of the hill ready to challenge for the Swedish control um, over here what happened the battalion of infantry uh, attempted to charge these fellows before they were there by the way um, but only got one move so they basically went past the uh, uh, disordered Carassias. Uh we did take a test to see whether or not we were disordered because that's the one time you can't interpenetrate uh, snigger snigger if you interpenetrate disordered troops friends uh, you roll a d6, if you get a 6, you're disordered yourself, but they didn't, so that's fine. They tried to bring the other regiment of cavalry that had been rallied last turn about around to support this melee over here, but it only got one move, so it's not in support range yet. So, that is it. We'll do some, uh, start with some shooting, and then we'll do the melees. So, over here. Imperial Pike and Shot get three dice. Um, they are firing at this unit of Commanded Shot, I think. Um, they will be hitting on a three because they're in close range. Huh. Shooting has been dire on both sides. That's one hit only. Um, they'll be saving on a four, which they save. So no effect there. We'll come back to the melee over here. Um, this pike of shot will fire at the light cannons in the front of them. Uh, it will be, yeah, well and truly in short range. So they'll be hitting on threes against that one, 
Ooh, two sixes. So it's a disorder. They save one, lose one. So they disordered the gun and put one casualty on them. I'll just leave that there for the moment. And then the other pike and shot. I think it'll fire at the other gun. Yeah, it doesn't have to. It could fire it. No, we'll fire at the um, Swedish as uh, against the Saxon um, infantry on the hill. That's who we're trying to destroy after all. Um, they are uh, going to be hitting on threes, but they're uphill, so they get an extra save, I think. Or is that just melee? No, it appears to only be in hand-to-hand -hand that applies. So we get three shots firing at those uh, pikemen, uh, pike and shot that's going to be hitting on a three. Ooh, two sixes again. Uh, they save on a four. They save both, but they are disordered. There we go. Um, and I think that's it on this side. The big pike and shot. I can fire at the cannon. So I might as well. Um, now a big unit gets a plus one on the uh, firing dice, so it gets to fire four dice this time. Um, hitting on a five because they're a disper blimey three sixes uh, saving roll of five that's three hits that's going to be a shaken gun that's for sure right um, and the next one can't really because it's got commanded shot right in its front um, so the commanded shot here and there will fire at those commanded shot it's going to be fours to hit, six dice. Wow. Uh, that's four hits. Uh, saving on a four. That's three casualties on them, so they're going to be shaken too. Oops. Ouch. This could be a bad turn for the Swedes. Uh, let's go back to the artillery uh, firing the heavy gun here. I think they're going to continue to soften up that one in front of them, in front of the where their friends are. Well, continue. They haven't done anything yet. Uh, it's one dice uh, firing overhead, and at long range is a six to hit. Nope. The medium will fire at the next one over is also going to be a six to hit. Nope. Um, Artillery here. They probably can't see an awful lot now. Uh, I think they're going to have to concentrate their fire on the enemy guns. So it's going to be a six to hit. Nope. And the medium gun. Yeah, it can probably fire at that commanded shot there. So it's going to be two dice hitting on a four. Two hits. They'll be saving on a six. No, nope, it's too cashed on them, so those commanded shot are going to be shaken as well. A lot of shaken troops here in the Swedish side. Not going well for them on this turn. Um, the uh, pike and shot that moved up, might as well put some more fire on them. It's going to be three shots hitting on a four. Three, that's two hits. Uh, saved one, lost one, so they're, lost, they're up to three casualties now, on top of the two they already had. And I think that's all the shooting to be done. So, um, so I don't forget it, we'll do the brake test there for those commanded shot. Uh, their, I think their stamina is only three. Yeah, it's only three. So they're on two over, uh, brings them down to a four, which I think is going to be gone. So they probably just routed. It's changing the complexion a lot on this left wing. Uh, over here, we've got uh, start with the start with the uh, charge here by the Crassiers against the commanded shot. Commanded shot um, get some closing fire as they come in. Um, so it's four dice for them, hitting on a three. Uh, hit with three, 
and they disorder the cavalry coming in. Cavalry save on a three. They save all three. So no losses, but they are disordered. Uh, so we might as well move on to the combat for that. So the command is shot. Only get three dice in hand to hand. The knight, uh, the knights, the um, Karasias get their customary eight. So the Karasias will be hitting on fours because they're now disordered, and the commander shot will be hitting on fours as well. So the commander shot do nothing at all. And the Crassiers do, they miss with three, so they do five. Five casualties on the, on the commander's shot. Would you Adam and Eve it? Look at that. They only take one loss. Good grief. Still lose the combat, mind, but only lost the one. So. Um, that means it's a break test at nothing because they're not um, not in excess and they're not disordered. Uh, so that five means they retire one full move and become disordered. So go six inches further back and become disordered. I'm pretty sure the crashes can't follow up because they are disordered themselves. So that is that. Uh, the melee there, which again is going to be one-way traffic, I suspect. I mean, the commander shot did very well to get out of that one. Uh, over here, we've got uh, the Swedes have got their seven dice. Um, and the Karasias have got their eight dice. Um, Crassiers are hitting on threes because they charged. They just missed with one. And the Swedes, because they're shaken in disorder, will be hitting on a five. Just two. Thought for a minute it was very good, but it was actually not as good. So the Crassiers are saving on a one or a two, which they saved both. And the Swedes are saving on a five. Oh my lord, oh my lord, um, well they're still losing but they, they managed to save four, <laughs> um, they lost three, so the three over, three in excess, <coughs> minus four because uh, they're disordered, um, uh, they are gone, they are toast. So another Swedish regiment breaks and runs. Um, they didn't inflict any losses on the on the Imperial forces. Now I think they can follow up, but I think they can only do one move, which is too far to get towards those fellas. So I think uh, I think man, they might retire as a result of that. Might as well pull back to there. As you know, they want to pull back to there. So they've done really well. The uh, on the, on this flank, the Swedes are in a bit of trouble. They've lost both their cavalry. They've only got the Finnish cavalry left and some commanded shots. So I think they might have to start retiring. This is not going how the real battle uh, occurred because in the real battle, um, the Swedes managed to sort of run rings around the crashes and their firepower from their commanded shot um, broke up the Karasia formations to such degree that they just couldn't um, deal with the uh, Swedes and then when the Swedes charged home um, it all went a little bit sour for them right uh, for the Imperials I mean so let's go across to the other flank and do the other melee so over here, um, we've got the existing combat here, which is going on again, not so good for the Swedes. Uh, they get their seven dice for seven. 
the uh, Imperial Harper Caburs get seven as well. Need another dice. So the Imperial forces are, it was a draw in the melee last turn. Um, they are fine, they're hitting on fours. Wow, one, one hit. That's all they got. And the Swedes will be hitting uh, seven dice, hitting on five because they're shaken. And they got one hit too. Um, so it's one each. The Swedes will be saving on, uh, sorry, the Imperials will be saving on a four. Or is it a four? Let me just double check that. Yep, it's a four. Um, and the Imperials, uh, sorry, Swedes will be saving on a five. So they both take one loss each, um, which means the Imperial Cavalry are shaken as well. They also, ah, now they're supported this side by there, so it's a draw. Um, the Swedes will need to take a shake test because they started the melee shaken. They roll a seven, so it becomes um, one over, uh, and they're only shaken. They're not disordered, so they're, that becomes six, um, which is retire one full move. So they will retire back through to there. They'll go back down to they'll, they'll, they'll go back down to their three casualties. Uh, I should have got disorder for those. Well, they're there as well. And the Imperial Cavalry are also shaken and disordered, so it means they can't pursue. Okay, so this is the end of uh, turn three. We'll be back with turn four, and it's um, getting interesting over here on the on the right flank. The uh, I think the Swedish cavalry are beginning to get the better of their opponents, but only just. It's been a, a fair old fight, um, but now the infantry are here and ready to take it to the Swedes. The only issue is they've got, f well, yeah, they, they outnumber the Swedes by quite a lot. So, and if those big blocks of infantry can get up, this could be game over. I think the Swedes might have to start attacking because their other flank is not looking good. We're back with turn four. Right, so Swedish turn four. Um, it's looking a bit looking a bit dicey here on this uh, uh, right flank for the Swedes. Uh, they've lost three of their six units in this battalion. So any more, and this brigade is going to go um, broken. Uh, hmm. I mean, mind you, the. Uh, uh, the uh, Imperials aren't much where well, they are actually they've got one two three f one broken one shaken um, yeah they're fine at the moment okay so they're nowhere near yet <coughs> so I think something drastic needs to happen if they've got any chance because otherwise they're just going to be slowly destroyed um, so first up uh, we will try hmm do they go down swinging or do they just try and I'm thinking they're going to charge these boys here the disordered um, Karasias they're going to need two moves the f these are the Finnish cavalry sorry you can't quite see them there there you go there we go Let's pull out a bit, then you can see what's going on. There you go. This finished cavalry unit 
um, is going to try and charge those. It's going to need two moves um, because it is um, just beyond 12 inches. They are like cavalry, so they can move 12. They rolled a four. Um, so that is well and truly enough. Now they can't hit in the flank because they didn't start behind the flank. So they are going to go and smash straight into those fellas there. It's a high risk strategy, um, but I think if they can break that unit uh, and then potentially carry on into that unit, <coughs> uh, the, the pike, um, the shot here can't move because they're disordered. Which is a bit of a shame. So the next unit over is going to be this unit, which is going to try and move across to support. And it rolls a three as well, so it will move across. Uh, do I throw the general in with that command? I think I might do. They're going to go down swinging one way or another. So they'll come to support them. That's probably the best thing that can happen there. The best thing that has opened a big hole in the middle here, uh, well, on the right flank. Um, so I think it's time for Gustav to do his stuff. Now normally he'd be he'd be um, uh, leading a whole load of his uh, um, cavalry into action, but I think he's going to try this time and activate a battalion order. To well, he's going to do a follow me order on this battalion here, and try and bring and because of his special order, it will bring the other battalion with him. Now I'm assuming that when it says the entire battalion moves guns do not as well but uh, let's see so he's a 10 he rolled a 9 <laughs> um, but only has to do one order to get away with it um, so he effectively gets three movement orders now he can't quite get all the way <clears throat> but he can get quite a long way towards those pikemen over there so he's leading them they're following So he's leading them and they're following. I suppose he should be in front, really. Anyway, whatever. He's saying, go on forward, boys. They haven't, they haven't used their first fire yet, so his flank is looking very weak indeed, especially with all these massive columns coming down. Um, the commanded shot, I think we'll just bring them up onto the edge there. Uh, 10. No, that's a failure, so they won't move any further. So that's that. Moving across. Uh, we got to decide. Got to decide what to do here. The um, a lot's going to rely on that artillery to do something, and the firing so far from the Swedish has not been awesome. So I think what they might do here is the um, the Saxon. Saxon troops here. Um, I think they're just gonna try and come round a little bit here so they can put some fire down. So half a move maybe. They rolled a four, so uh, sorry, six, so that's fine. So basically they're gonna come round like that. So they can put some extra fire on that column that's coming up the slope. Um I think the guys there can't move because they're disordered and seems a shame to leave the Swedish or the Scottish uh, pike with their first volley not being out of fire um, but I don't really see what else I can do for the moment because those guns are right in the way could pull the guns back but I think their chance of putting a bit of canister into those columns has got to be worthwhile because the extra the extra loss on a saving roll is quite significant. Um, over here, what to do? Uh, these are ca these cavalry are obviously shaken. Um, these are not, so they're just that's an easy move. They just do an initiative charge straight into those cavalry. They can't respond. Um, the that's the Swedish commander over here. I think the commanded shot. 
are they going to be able to stop those guys there's a fair chance there's a lot of firing so i'm going to take a chance we're just going to try and bring the commander to try and rally off a shake off those uh, which he does, so he joins that unit there, takes one casualty off them, so they're no longer shaken, however they are disordered. Now, this, uh, I'm, I'm moving out of order. The, um, uh, the Saxon cavalry that are here feel like they've got to try and uh, start to get a command radius, but at the moment they're just in. Um, so, do we move them forward? as a battalion down to there i think that's probably the way to go about it so they're going to try and move down it's probably going to be two moves i would imagine no one move will do it they rolled a seven so that's enough and they'll basically just come down to provide support and try and exploit what's going on on that wing Right, I think that's everything from the Swedish turn. So let's uh, let's do some shooting. So uh, the Halkobus there that are shaken on the Imperial side can fire, uh, even though they're they're shaken. They're receiving the charge at the halt. They do have pistols, so they're getting one shot. Um, would be four closing fire three, but they're shaken back to four again. They rolled a four. Can the Swedes save? No, they can't. So that's one uh, casualty as they come in. Uh, so that's that. We'll do the combat in a minute. We've got um, a lot of musket tree here to fire at this column, this uh, pike and shot here. They're all within short range. Um, so they're going to be hitting on three. So get eight dice. Crikey, two. Can they finally do something? These uh, Swedish musketeers have been, I don't know whether the powder's damp or, or what it is, but they've uh, not really been doing anything this game so far. Uh, threes to hit. Still not brilliant. Still managed to miss with half. <laughs> uh, the pike and shot saving on fours. Uh, they take three losses themselves So that's uh, a fair amount of damage on them. Now, I don't think I'll Just check there. I think their uh, toughness or the stamina is four. Let me just double check that Imperial combined Actually the stamina is five. Okay, so they're definitely not shaken yet. They have got three losses and they weren't disordered by that, so they can probably get a charge off next go. Over here, um, both cannons are going to fire at that unit there. So it's four inches away, light cannon uh, is three shots. So this one though is disordered, so even though it's close range, uh, it's going to be fours to hit. Ouch, that's a six. Uh, so that's two hits. And the other cannon will be hitting on threes. Uh, so that is no, two more hits. So they've suffered four hits and they're disordered. Uh, the pipe block saves on a four, but it goes down three. Uh, down two because it's artillery under fire wow two sixes and a uh, five and a two so they only take two losses so they're disordered but only take two losses um they're quite hardy these uh imperials they don't care cannons to the front of them turns that anyway whatever um moving across we've got the saxon um uh, combined troops on the hill are going to fire now. They are freshly raised. So, let me just refresh myself what happens with that. So, basically, the first time it shoots at an enemy, or the first time it enters hand to hand, um, it rolls a dice and sees what happens to it. So, this unit here, a five, 
sterling jobs they do their duty no effect so they are fine and while i'm here i might as well do the other unit because that's gonna well, that was the same or oh, that one unexpectedly performs heroically gets an extra plus one to its shooting or it's hand to hand for that turn only wow okay so they're quite up for it for the moment so um saxon um combined pike and shot get three shots so we'll start with this one um it's three shots firing at that pike and shot down below um it would be a three to hit but they're disordered so that's fours missed with everything oh my lord firing it i mean it must be very damp or something around here uh so i'll take that disorder off because that will come off and i might as well take that one off as well while i'm here because that went that comes off at the end of the turn it just helps me remember so these guys here what did i say an extra dice wasn't it so is it dice or i've forgotten already i've only just read the rule i've forgotten what it was but it's an extra dice or um yeah shoot extra dice so it's got four shots first of all um it's still within six i believe yeah so it's hitting on threes uh that's four hits makes up for the other unit they're saving on fours uh save two but critically no disorder oh, i'm putting it on the back one it's that one okay so that is that now they've freshly raid have fired so they don't need to worry about dicing again so that's all the shooting then not the effect i was hoping for for a swedish unit there but hey ho uh let's do the oops, sorry let's get the camera let's do the artillery um this gun i think i'll fire that commanded shot it's just beyond half range so it's going to be one dice hitting on a five hits so their commanded shot are saving on uh i think the Imperial ones are slightly weaker on armor. Yeah, no, the fours, uh, but they'll go down two. So six is to save, saves it absolutely fine. Uh, the medium gun here, well, I think it might as well fire at the same unit. Uh, it's two dice hitting on a, no, hang on, it's not two dice. Their range is 36. So it's beyond half range, so it's one dice hitting on a five. Nope. The shooting continues to be atrocious. Uh, the commanded shot here. Yeah, they'll fire at that end one there. They get four dice because they're Swedish. Um, hitting on a four. Uh, slightly better. Three hits, including a disorder. Whoops. Uh, saving on fours. They've saved a lot. They're just disordered. No casualties again. Wowza. Uh, the cannons beside those uh, will fire at them. I think, again, they're going to be beyond halfway. They are, so it's just one dice hitting on a five. Nope. Living a charmed life, those... Uh, There's commanded shot over there. Um, the Swedish pike and shot unit moved up. It is within six inches. So it gets, uh, gets a first fire. So you get four dice plus the extra one for first fire. We'll take that black marker away so don't get confused. Uh, we'll be hitting on threes. Uh, that is three hits including a six. They save on a four. Uh, that's two casualties and a disorder. Um, moving across, we've got the commanded shot here. We'll pour shot into the cav the crashes in front of them. Uh, four shots hitting on threes. That's what they wanted. Got the disorder. That may have saved their bacon. Uh, just the two hits, saving on threes. Still lost the casualty. 
the crashes here that were charged by the fins gets one shot. Their disordered closing fire is forced to hit. They missed. Um, and we've got melee. This unit of uh, this unit of uh, musketeers can't fire because it's not no target. So I'll take its disorder off while I'm here. We might as well do the combat. Right, so this charge, the Finnish cavalry gets seven dice. Um, they uh, hit on a three because they're charging, um, and they get ferocious charge. They get to re-roll any misses. The Carassiers get eight dice, uh, but they are disordered, and they're meeting the charge at the halt, so they get hit on fives. So they are the red dice. Uh, so, the Karasias did pretty well again, they've been fighting pretty hard, they got four hits by the look of it. Um, the Finns only missed with one, but they get to re-roll that miss, but they miss anyway. So, four saves for the Finns at five, because their armour isn't great. Oh, whoa, oh, oh, ho, oh, oh. ho, ho! Three saves, they only take the one loss. And the uh, Karasias take two, four, six hits, needing threes. But they only, they only lose one themselves, so the armour of the Karasias helps them. Which means the Finns are shaken, because they're on three casualties. Um... Crashers, I think it's four, if I might remember. Yes, four. So they are not shaken. How It's a draw in the combat because... Oh, can they be supported by Disordered? No, they cannot. That saves the, that saves the Finns. So Disordered and Shaken cannot provide support. So um, means that, that it was a one-all draw. Ah, I'll get this right in a minute. So it was a one-all draw on the combat. The these cavalry cannot support the Karasias because they're disordered. They can be, so that's one up in the favour of the Finns. However, Karasias are heavy cavalry, so they get to roll a, a D3 worth of support, uh, which they get one. <laughs> so that's a straight up draw. Um, so nobody need. There was no excess casualties. Nobody lost the combat. Nobody started the round shaken. So we stay locked in combat there. Uh, however, the ca Swedish cavalry brigade is now broken. So they, uh, these commanded shot are going to have to start to withdraw, which is a disaster for the uh, disaster for the uh, the. Um, get your words out, Dom. It's a disaster, disaster for the Swedes. That's for sure. Okay, um, onwards to the other melees, I guess. Okay, so I'm not sure what happened there. I'm not sure that last bit recorded, so I'll just recap slightly. So the Swedish cavalry charged the uh, shaken um, Imperial cavalry that were here. Um, they managed to do six hits on the Imperials, which was converted to three actual casualties on the Imperial harquebusts in return for just one of their own which meant the uh, Swedish cavalry won the melee convincingly, even though um, the Imperials were supported by that pike and shot that was there. Uh, on the break test, the cavalry took, they failed and broke. So that's the situation. We then had to do a support check for the uh, uh, pike and shot that were alongside. They got a retire disordered. Um, thing. So that's what's happened there. So I'm not sure what happened with the camera there, but sorry about that. Um, so that means these boys, because they won, have the chance to follow up. Which is definitely what they are going to do. So they will continue and charge on into those... the other unit of Harkabus that have got two wounds there. So... We need to do immediate combat for that. But it looks like the battery's gone, so that could be why it's shut off before. Right, so the continuing combat, because these guys followed up into the Harkabursts, uh, 
standing behind. They can't respond in any way, so they can't fire, they can't defensive fire, but they do get seven dice hitting on fours. Uh, the Swedish cavalry coming in are also seven dice, but they're hitting on threes. So again, green for the uh, Swedes, red for the Imperials. Uh, so the Imperials just get two. The Swedes get six. Six plays, yeah. So the uh, Swedish, they're saving on fives. They saved one, lost one, but is enough to shake them. And the um, Imperials save on a four. Oh, they only lose one. But that also is enough to shake them too. So the upshot of that is a one-all draw. Neither side wins. They can't be supported by the Karasia because they're disordered, and they can't be <laughs> supported by the um, Pike and Shot because they're disordered. Swedes have no support, so that's a straight up draw. It will be continuing next go. Wow. Okay, that was that. So that's the end of turn four for the Swedes. Um, it's interesting so what's the command here this command is on the imperial side it's lost one it's only lost one unit and it's got one shaken uh lots of disorders and lots of casualties so um not looking so good for them at the moment right um we'll do the uh imperial turn four then so not much can happen on the imperial side here because everything's disordered um, so I think all the, um, so the, ah, the, the commander can't even rally off casualties because once you're disordered, you can't take orders. So, um, there's really nothing he can do on this flank at all. So we'll just do the round of melee next turn. Let's move to the center. So what do we do here? Again, this pike and shot can't do anything because it's disordered. Um, hmm. This one could. So I think what they're going to do is an initiative charge at those boys there. You don't need to dice for it, it's an automatic if you're within initiative range which they certainly are and then um, the unit behind this one here is going to try and move up to support them however an eight I think that's fine for him so only one move it's probably not going to be enough to get them into support radius it's not hmm that may be a mistake for for those uh, boys there that's all that command can do uh, we might as well do this shooting as the uh, as the boys come in on them. So, uh, so I remember to do it now. So those guys get uh, no three dice. I was right to check it. Uh, they are hitting on a uh, three. Three hits of three. <laughs> the uh, pike and shot saving on fours. Uh, they take two casualties. Which is not great for them. I think that might have shaken them. Four casualties on that unit. No, there's sixes, aren't they? I checked that earlier. Just double check. Got on my brain. Imperial Pike and Shop have five stamina, so that will shake them. So I think. Let me just double check this. I think that means they can't charge home test if shaken by closing fire so they have to do a break test so let's see what happens to them oh <laughs> I think when you roll that you know exactly <laughs> what's going to happen um, so they break the, the closing fire of, this, of the Saxons 
finally shows the Swedes how to fire and destroys the closing unit. Wow! I wasn't expecting that. I thought they'd probably struggle in the hand-to-hand -hand because of the height advantage the, 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 um, the Saxons would have had, but they are dead. Right. Okay, into the centre. I think... Um, do we react to the Swedes moving across there, or do we continue to try and support the centre? I feel like if this is fairly crucial time. The Imperials have, uh, have won that flank over there, but they're in trouble. That command is about to be in trouble because of all these fresh pike units moving across from the Swedish centre. It has left a big hole here. Now, the dilemma is what to do with this big command. Do we continue to support the guys going for the hill, or do we swing that way and try and deal with the troubling um, Swedish troops that are heading across? I don't know. I feel they've got. I feel they've got to. Well, I think they've got to continue with their with their attack over here. Maybe the wrong thing to do, but I think they're going to have to. Um, it's a bit of a tricky situation for them. So he's going to order both these battalia to move as fast as they can that way, and they failed. He rolled an eleven. Clearly as indecisive as decisive as I am, if I can get my brain working. Oh my goodness, that's um, that's intriguing. So that means uh, Tilly can't move this turn. Hmm. Let's move over to this flank. This unit can't move because it's disordered. This is very much a decisive turn for all concerned. I think. Over here on this flank, the cavalry. So that's an ongoing melee. Those cavalry disordered and these cavalry shaken. Uh, everything on this command cannot move. Now he can't take the cavalry there. Uh, ooh, yeah. So everything in this left flank imperial command is is disordered or shaken so they can't take orders which means they can't do anything I can't even rally off casualties off the um, off the unit because it can't take orders so all I can do is bring the uh, commander forward um, and we might as well start with some shooting so the disordered cavalry will fire at uh, they'll fire their pistols at the uh, commanded shot it's going to be forced to hit to hit, commander shot, save on a four, they saved it, so no effect there. We'll remove that sword. Oh no, we'll leave that on because of the hand to hand to come. Um, this cavalry can't do anything. The command, uh, sort of pike and shot here will fire at their Swedish brethren there. It is short range. Um, I think they get four dice. But they are disordered, so hitting on fours. Wow, they got three shots in, including a disorder. Save and roll for the fit, uh, for the Swedes. They take two casualties. That might have saved the bacon of the Imperial left wing. Crikey. All right, um, I'll come back to the rest of the shooting. I might as well do the melees here because otherwise I'll forget what's going on. So this melee here, we've got the Imperials have eight dice still. The uh, Swedes, we're done with their dice. We're all down the other end. Break out the pink dice for them because all the other dice are down the other end of the table. Uh, they get seven dice. Uh, so 8v7, the everybody's rolling at 5s because they are either disordered or shaken. Uh, 5s, that's 2, 3, 4 hits from the fins 
and only two hits from the uh, Karasias. So the Karasias get two hits on the Finns, who save on fives, and they save them both. Wow. So no casualties on the Finns, uh, and four casualties potentially on the Karasias, who save on a three. They take two. So, that's the turnaround. Which means the Karasias are now shaken. They don't get heavy, I think only heavy cavalry only works. Right, so I just wanted to check that out. So as I suspected, um, the uh, heavy cavalry bonus only counts if you've charged. Um, so the crashes clearly haven't. Um, which meant they probably shouldn't have had it last turn. Anyway, it doesn't matter, it was a draw. Uh, which means they have definitely lost this combat um, and they are one in excess of their uh, shape test and also they are disordered, so it's minus two on the break test. So six they've rolled, which goes down to four, which is gone. So the Karasias are destroyed by the Finnish light cavalry. Now the Finns can't pursue because they are shaken themselves. They didn't suffer any casualties, they are perfectly okay, however they will have to retire because this whole command is broken. So I'm going to put some markers out to remind myself that that command is broken. Because they've lost three out of their six units. Shock horror, Dom remembered the rules correctly. So the, the way the Battaglia broken order works is if half of your brigade, more than half your brigade, is broken, um, routed, destroyed, etc., um, and counts as shaken at the beginning of your turn. Now these Finnish cavalry were shaken at the beginning of the turn, which meant they actually had one, two, three, four out of their six broken, which pushed them over the 50%, which means the entire command is broken. Well, um, the, let's have a look at the other side of the table. Um, the Imperial Command on this side has lost two, um, but it's still got, th well, actually three, because that would count. Um, and only two left, so that means that command is also broken at the beginning of their next turn. So that is, both the flanks have basically um, broken each other. So they are broken, they're broken. And they are broken. So basically because this unit will count as shaken at the beginning of next turn, that means the Imperial left wing has suffered three lost units because that would count towards the total and only has two left artillery don't count even if they were in the command which they're not so that means they're finished so we'll take the disorders off not that it really matters well that's the turn up for the books so both the flanks have gone um interesting all right let's carry on with some shooting certainly been a brutal fight that's for sure um the ordnance here They'll probably have to fight the Swedes there. So 20 inches, their range is 48, so they get two shots hitting on a, it's not over half range, so they're hitting on a four. Two hits, and the Swedes save on sixes. Oh, they take one casualty. Put that there for the moment. And then the smaller, ordnance here that's only one dice hitting on a five missed so that's it for them um, so moving across we've got the commander shot units here they're both going to pour their fire on their opposition numbers there so we get uh, six dice 
hitting on, oh, I have to split this because these are disordered on this end. So these will hit on fives, nothing, and the others will be hitting on fours. One hit. It's like the damp powder problem that Swedes had earlier is trans transferred to the Imperials. Saving roll for them, they've passed, so no casualties. Uh, the light gun here on the hill. Have to fight that, it's only one shot hitting at sixes because it's overhead and long range. That is a hit. Uh, and it's not saved. Now they don't have to do a break test because if you needed to, sorry, they, they aren't disordered because if you're trying to hit, where are you? How does that work? Yeah, if you're trying to hit with a six, you need two. So um, that is not a hit, a disordering hit. It is a hit, you know what I mean. Uh, the heavy battery, I think it's going to have to fire at that one there. Uh, 48, so it's long range shot again, only one dice hitting on A5. Which it does and disorders that pipe block. They're saving on a 6. No, that's uh, a heavy cannonball to the head. So over here, uh, this wing. These guys are going to fire at those pike and shot on the hill. Uh, four dice hitting on a three. Uh, all four hits. Save and roll for the uh, Saxons on the hill. Will be fours. Take two losses. No disorder though. The disordered pike shot here. Um, I think they'll fire at these commanded shot on the end of the line here. It's probably better than firing at the gun. So four shots, they'll be hitting on fours because they're close range but disordered. Just the one. And they save it. I'll take that disorder off. So I remember it's gone. Um, over to the cavalry mush. So, um, shooting wise, Karas is here, they're out of range of anything, well those are own, own troops so they better not fire on them, they're out of range of those so that uh, won't apply, so that's all the shooting, so we just, did we do this one this turn? We did, so that's the end of, uh, end of this turn, I'll take those disorders off too, so at least they're able to act this turn. And it will be Swedish turn five. Um, this is pretty close match. Much tighter game than I thought it was going to be. Um, which is great. Really enjoyable. Hope you're enjoying it too. Right, so Swedish turn five. What do we do? On the left flank, we'll start here because that's where we're standing. Um, the Saxon cavalry are out of command radius, however, they are in initiative range. So, do we do an initiative charge onto the Karasias? I feel that would be a little suicidal. Or do they just support this combat? At the moment, these boys here are supported by two friends, whereas these are not. So they're going to be up two straight away on the melee. So I feel we're going to have to move forward to support. So an initiative, they're going to move up and provide support. I think I can only use one for that. So maybe what we'll do... Those caresses are, are untouched. They've got no casualties at all. So it really depends if the uh, 
could bring these up here but I'd have to dice for that okay I'll tell you what we're going to do they are command radius but they are going to yeah because the Saxons are not going to move anything else so these cavalry um, I'm pointing at the wrong thing so these cavalry here because they're out of command radius it's going to be an extra on their command they're uh, going to need a, a seven to do anything um, but they're going to try and bring them up in support there they do it so they are supporting those heavy cavalry on their right on their left flank that's probably the best thing to do with those in the center we're going to, just going to try and hope that the, the uh, commanded shot actually no these guys are going to pull back onto the hill um, they might as well try and hold up as long as they possibly can these fellas as well they can do that as a an initiative you don't have to go forward on initiative you can go backwards as well um, I think I may have just lied but okay. my opponent doesn't mind and then this unit of cavalry here I think we're just going to bring them to here so one move, uh, 10 is a failure, so that is nothing for them. Um, which means nothing else can happen over here. The Saxons could, but they've only got the two infantry and one of which is disordered, so that doesn't mean any, nothing will happen there. They don't need to do anything. Across the center here, that's a casualty on them. The commanded shot they're really not doing what I hope they would do so this command in the center we've got one disordered and no wonder they turned the wrong way around no wonder they couldn't hit anything um, so that command there is broken anyway that they're up against so they might as well start to re so I think they're going to retire they, even though they're disordered, they're allowed to do that. No, they're not. They're going to stay there. They're going to stay exactly where they are. Because there's no point doing anything else. The other supporting pike and shot unit, we're going to try and swing it that way. Uh, it's about as far as we can go, really. That's three moves. So, 18 inches. So basically to there and then the commanded shot and the commander shot they're here are going to try and come up alongside them which they do okay um, so the other unit can't do anything because it's disordered over here the broken command has to retire you, the way you do it you dice for the units if they fail they still do one so there we go right on to some shooting shall we so even though they're broken these can fire I mean there's very little point but they might as well do it uh, four shots hitting on a uh, five uh, it's just one hit one hit on the cavalry they passed so forget that uh, moving over we've got the well again they might as well fire uh, four shots into the uh, broken pike and shot uh, will be uh, we're disordered so that'll be fours just the one hit which they do not save I'll take the disorder off now because they won't be at the end of the turn it's up to three casualties again not that it really matters it's just that if you could get a disorder well if you can end the brake test on them they might just run away which means they don't fire at me next go um, moving over moving over to the uh, light guns not sure they've got anything to fire at they've only got 24 inch range after all not oh yeah that's, is that touching yeah, it is touching so one shot hitting on a six they do not do it 
Um, the other, she's commander needs to be further forward. Uh, the other medium battery here will fire at that unit of big unit of pike and shot over there. Uh, that's one hit, uh, one dice hitting at fives. No, and the light cannon will fire at the commanded shot. The light cannon will fire at the commanded shot. It's just beyond the foot, so um, that's going to be fives. Nope, missed. Then the then the first volley. Then the first volley for the Swedish unit will fire at the uh, disordered commanded shot. They get five dice, um, hitting on a three. Well, they get the disorder again. See, why have they still got the disorder? They should have taken that off. But anyway, they've got it back on again. Uh, that's three hits, and it's three casualties on that unit. Think we'll just shake it. Uh, so the commanded shot alongside the pike um, will fire at the other unit. So it's four shots hitting on uh, fours. So disorder on them too, which is useful, and two hits. Oop. Saving on fours, they lose one. Unbelievably, that's the first casualties those commanders shot on the Imperial side have taken, even though they've been fired at pretty much every turn. Uh, moving across, the disordered pike and shot will fire um, onto the Imperial forces there. Um, I've forgotten again how many dice it is, because, yeah, that's what I thought it was. Three dice. Three dice hitting on a... They're outside of close range. Yeah, because that's actually there. Yeah. Three shots hitting on a four. Uh, five, because they're disordered. It's one hit. Which they save. Um, the guy... I'll take the disorder off now. Because there's no melee to worry about. The other unit, a pike and shot... Firing down the hill into that pike and shot, gets three dice hitting on a three this time because it's close range. It's two hits. Saving on fours. Save them both. Bulletproof those Imperials. The cannon might as well fire at the boys right in front of them. So we get three dice hitting on um, threes. That's three hits. Saving on sixes, whoops. No saves, so three casualties onto those fellas. Just mark that for the moment. That's probably enough to stop any attack coming in there. And it doesn't shake them, but it uh, certainly makes them think about their choices in life. Yeah, one more and their, their stamina has exceeded. Uh, so that was that, that was that. This cannon will fire at that unit. Three dice hitting on threes. Oh, bloody lousy roll, just one hit. Saving on anything but a six, uh, and saving on needing a six is what I meant. So they're up to three. Um, and then the commanded shot here will fire down. within short range, so that's uh, four shots hitting on threes. That's disordered them, finally. Um, and two hits. Oops. That's a pike. Can they shake them? That would be the end of that command too. No, they passed. Wow. Lucky boys. Um, and then the other pike, uh, commanded shot, don't think they can really get a sh uh, they probably can actually, they'll fire up the uh, pike and shot again, um, will be four dice hitting on fours. <laughs> two twos and two ones, clearly their heart is not in it this game, these, uh, uh, these boys. Right, so we've got an ongoing melee. Um, so I think that's the only melee there is this turn. 
so we've got the um, basically both sides have got seven dice seven for the reds seven for the greens they are both shaken so they're both hitting on fives oops come here Okay, so it looks like the Swedes only got one and the Imperials got three. Wow. Uh, so saving rolls for the uh, Swedes. Saved two of them, so they only lost one man. The Imperials got their two, we're saving on fours. They saved them both. So, upshot of that is it was 1-0 to the Imperials. Um, however, supports, and they both have two supports, so that means the Swedish cavalry lose. Uh, they need to do a break test at one over. They rolled an 11, uh, 10, which goes down to a 9, which I'm pretty sure will be uh, run away and go disordered. Yeah, retire one full move and go disordered. So they lose the excess casualties. And we will move the camera back. And they go back all the way up the hill here. Where they are shaken and disordered. So, I think that's the end of the Swedish turn 5, so we're on to turn 5 for the Imperials. Just check this command here, so they've lost nothing, they've only lost one, two cavalry regiments, there's a third there, oh that's broken, because that's all that's left of their command. So beginning of the turn. The Imperial left wing, sorry, Imperial right wing is broken. So the Carassias and these Pike and Shot are going to have to start retiring. That's a result. That pretty much seals the fate of the Imperial Army, I think. Because they've lost that command. This command here, climbing the hill, has only got two regiments left and is looking rather exposed. The Tully's troops in the middle should have got the moving first earlier I think um, they're gonna have to deal with a pesky uh, brigade in the middle first of all we'll play it out but I think it's probably time over back in a minute right then Imperial turn five um, this is probably the time when the Empire is beaten back um, all this command here is broken because they've lost uh, Three, they've lost two and the other one shaken is three out of their five so it's more than half so they are going to have to retire so we'll start the cavalry they do a five uh, he's a level two uh, seven leader so that's two moves so we'll just move them back they won't even be in firing range by the look of it well definitely not they've only got muskets only got um, pistols the pike and shot uh, they failed but they always get one move so they start to retire to there and the crassiers who had never taken any casualties have decided that discretion is the better part of valor uh, they go three moves so that's uh, 9, 18, 27 Cracky, they're a long way, they're way off the table. So there you go, that is a sad situation for the, that's a sad situation for the uh, Imperial right wing, all broken, all pulled back. Um, into the centre here, I mean, do they go for glory? The trouble is they've got one unit, because this one can't do anything, it's, it's already on, 
already on three casualties, so I think it's got one chance with a bit of fire. Can't take can't take a casualty off because it's um, uh, disordered. Oh, they're on three, aren't they? That's what the marker is for. Oh, good grief! So there is no point in doing anything here. Um, yeah. Hmm. Do we go for glory? Just go down swinging? I think so. Let's go for it. Um, they are going to do an initiative charge into those boys there. You never know. They might get lucky. At least they can get bragging rights. Um, and that is it. I might as well do the closing fire for the boys that have been charged. They get three dice hitting on threes. That's two hits. Neither are saved. That means they are shaken by closing fire. Um, and one excess. One excess. So that's a break test at minus two. Uh, that brings it down to a four, so they are broken. So that is pretty much game over, I think. They're broken. They're broken and they are broken. Because that means that central command has also lost two of uh, of three units. There's only a three unit uh, command, which means this other pike and shot will go uh, sh uh, broken anyway. It's probably going to get blown apart by all the ca all the fire there anyway. So that is pretty much it. I think I'm going to call it there. Um, I think we're going to say it is a victory to the Swedes. Um, brutal fight. I think probably my mistake was attacking too soon on this right wing without getting Tully or Tilly up in support. Those big blocks of pike and shot um, could have swayed it either way and they haven't played any part in the battle and partly that was me dithering not knowing what to do which I guess is historic because you still think well do we push left? Do we push right? Do we just carry on? Um, and the Swedes tried to use their firepower. It was terrible. Their firepower really let them down, but they got away with it. So um, I think the piecemeal attack by my Imperial forces onto the hill was, see, was we were able to deal with quite easily as the Swedes and deal with quite uh, heavily because those um, Saxon troops there are not very good. Uh, we've still got a uh, Scottish regiment here that hasn't even fired yet. <laughs> it's still sitting there waiting, eating its haggis, ready to go. Um, the Saxon cavalry are over here, although they're out of command. So uh, at the moment they're qualifying us to hold this flank. Because remember the objectives for the game were both sides had to capture each other's hills um, and um, secure the flanks. Um, at the moment it's a draw. But um, if we were playing eight turns, I think it would be fairly easy for the uh, for the Swedes to secure what they needed. Um, yeah, a lot of artillery on the Imperial side, but didn't do an awful lot, as it as is the case in the battle. Actually, the Swedish artillery um, outperformed their Imperial foe considerably, um, and really just that Tilly Central Command just not going anywhere was the biggest problem. Over here on the left uh, wing for the Imperials, the right for the um, uh, for the uh, Swedish troops, it was a brutal fight. Didn't play out quite how it did in reality. Um, in reality, um, in reality, the battle was played out. There was a prolonged artillery battle, which the Swedes were getting the better of, um, and then. Um, uh, the left flank commander for the Imperials with all the cuirassiers committed them to try and break the deadlock so he went charging forward and the Swedish and Finnish cavalry against them managed to outflank them um, and beat them off 
Um, we kind of outflanked them, but in beating them off, we also lost the Swedish command. So Swedish command is broken, but in doing so, um, well, actually, with uh, Gustav committing his centre, um, meant that the uh, imper victorious imperial left wing was broken as well, which meant um, both sides on, on this flank lost. Um, so yeah, I think it was a good game. I enjoyed it. Really tense and actually um, played out pretty well uh, at this scale on these figures. Um, I think the game was um, was tight. It could have gone either way, in all honesty. Um, as I say, I think I didn't commit. I think if you're going to commit for an attack, you've got to go all in. And leaving your biggest command, <laughs> two big pipe blocks like that, they should have gone in earlier, um, which was my bad. I think on the Swedish side, um, I possibly should have just played for time more on this on this cavalry wing. Got rather committed. I think I confused myself with the commanded shot. I thought they could skirmish, um, and, and they obviously couldn't, which meant they're in danger of being ridden down, which was why I had to get the cavalry up quicker to support them. Um, I think in the set in the centre left. The Swedes played pretty much uh, defensively, tried to use their firepower. And on another day, they would have caused a lot more casualties on the Imperial forces than they did today. Um, but um, I'm going to give them a tactical victory, if not a complete victory. Um, you know, there's two more turns to go. In fact, we're only on turn five, aren't we? And I said, I said eight turns. So they've got three turns to, to secure a convincing victory, which I think they would probably do now. Because the uh, Imperial Army is broken. Uh, they've lost one, two, three of their four battalia. So only Tilly's left. So that's an army broken. And um, that is game over. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a like, subscribe. All that good stuff. Share with your mates, share with your granny. All those things. Thanks to all my supporters. Much appreciated. Um, and um, thanks for all those who just commented and enjoyed the games. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, let me know. And I'll see you again soon. This is Dom, signing out.